This is Chris Brunhaver with PS Audio. I'm here answering questions about loudspeakers and rooms and acoustics and uh, DIY stuff and, and all kinds of things. Um, this is a question from Corbin in Texas. Uh, he says, um, thank you, you've really helped me refine and improve my own system. Well, you're welcome. Uh, especially your videos on subs. I have two rel subs in my system. That's great. Um, which I've combined, combined with my stand mounted speakers and it really has opened up my system. Um, but that made me think, uh, as a designer of speakers, knowing that your end customer will be using subs, would you or anyone change the design of the speakers? Uh, as separate powered subs would be handling the lower frequencies, that would mean you'd have a different design on the main speakers, e.g. change the crossovers or woofers to a more limited range. Um, and would limiting the frequency range of speakers actually improve their sound as they're trying to do less but doing it better? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. And um, yes, you know, if you're... Um, you can certainly design speakers to be used with the subwoofer. Um, and the main challenge in doing that is uh, if you design a speaker to be used with a subwoofer and then the customer doesn't use a subwoofer, <laughs> then you've got a speaker that just has very disappointing low frequencies and that, that has happened uh, you know, at various companies where, where I've worked where we've designed a, a, a system that says buy this sub and these speakers and people buy the speakers like, well, they only, they only play to 80 hertz. Um, and that's not very exciting. So, um, you know, it's something where um, what, what you get when you do that, uh, and it's, it's probably most commonly done in home theater, where there's sort of established standards on, um, you know, small systems that are trying to do it all, um, satellite subsystems or uh, high output systems where you need as much output as you can get um, for high impact home theater, just because home theater has a big dynamic range you know, between you, know, you have whisper, quiet dialogue, and then these huge, you know, the T-Rex chasing you down the down the road. Um, so they, they've been pretty good about protecting the small speakers with a crossover, and then you know, steering stuff to a sub. And uh, <coughs> you know, when you do that, and when you design a speaker around having um, not as extended bass, you can have much higher sensitivity because there's a a trade-off between bass extension sensitivity and box size. So if box size is fixed and you raise the low frequency cutoff, you, you reduce the bass extension, the system can have you know, a few dB higher sensitivity if you cut an octave of bass extension out. So uh, it can be much more dynamic and um, have higher output and sound cleaner in the range that it, it, does, you know, it does operate. Because when you're feeding low bass into a speaker, there's um, uh, all kinds of um, distortion that that causes. A lot of distortion in woofers relates to current and to excursion. Um, so if you reduce those things, um, um, reduce the energy into the speaker and reduce the amount of excursion, there's less modulation distortion, distortion and force factor modulation and um, you know all kinds of uh, harmonic distortion and stuff. So it just sounds cleaner. Um, so yeah, I mean I think there's there's certainly benefits into doing that. Uh, in fact, our um, our our speaker that we're, we've been working on here. Uh, is basically like a three-way monitor speaker on top of a powered sub and, and has a separate mid bass that sort of functions like the bottom end of a smaller speaker that you'd use in an active system that, that um, let's say, has an 80 hertz cutoff. That happens to be the range in which we're crossing it over um, you know, to the, the built-in subwoofer. And yeah, there's certainly benefits to that approach and you can have you know, lots of slam and impact and, and um, you know, great response there. Um, you know, from the and it frees up the you know higher sensitivity for the the uh, mid bass and and on up. So yeah, I think that's a a very good question and something that lots of manufacturers do. Um, you know, in hi-fi where we're you know not assuming that people have a subwoofer many times, um, you're striking a balance with all that. You might have more more bass extension, um, but uh, you're sacrificing output and and uh, linearity and stuff at times, trying to force a smaller woofer to go low and and things like that. So it's, uh, you know, there's positives and negatives to all this stuff. But um, but yeah, I think um, you're on the right track with all this stuff. I'm glad you're enjoying your subwoofers. And yeah, that's some of the, the design considerations in satellite subwoofer stuff as compared to full range. And, um, you know, they're, they're both totally valid approaches. It's just, you know, what do you, you know, what sort of tools do you want to give people uh, to use in their listening environments to get the best sound? Well, uh, thanks again, Corbin, and that uh, makes me think of Corbin Dallas from uh, Fifth Element. Anyway, it's a good name.
Uh, and thanks again for uh, for the message and uh, you know happy listening. Okay, bye bye. Thank you.